long time no see everyone we are back diving for lobster first night dive of the season first dive back in it's been like over two months uh conditions have not been good and uh i've been all over so all over the place but the conditions have not been that great for shore diving so finally things are lightening up uh but before we go head over to the spot in palos verdes uh, I wanted to, I'm going to test out these new lights. I was sent these. I'll do a full review on them, but today's going to be the first test day of these. Um, the dive light. And then also this kind of uh, beacon. Uh, beacon that also has a small light. Uh, let's see if I can turn this on. So there's a nice light there. And then every time you twist it, there's a different color. So it's RGB. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to use this as like a marker. Uh, for myself and then also uh, for marking holes. Hopefully I find some bugs, but uh, today we're going for bugs Let's dive in. Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Let's head over to the spot. Let's go Right, everyone we just got to the spot in Palos Verdes it is a little chilly outside not looking forward to that um, but first night dive first dive of the season um, we're gonna go check out the conditions um, but nevertheless supposed to be pretty good about a foot or so um, then we're gonna check it out and see how it goes just grab the gear we're gonna test out this light right here and then we have our float line testing out a new system the beacon and then this is going to float at the top of the float line but uh, I got inspiration from uh, Spear with X he was using a float line for his light so I got that this kind of idea lightweight uh, float line but ready to go all the boys are here got dive buddy Tony here yo what's going on guys ready buddy K we are ready to dive let's go get some bugs so entering the water this night dive, the conditions were projected to be a foot, foot and a half, which they were going out. Uh, the tide was about medium, not too low, not too high um, when you're first going in, but there are plenty of rocks at this location. So you want to be careful, especially at night. So we're illuminating um, the spots where we're about to want to spot and head out, um, avoiding larger rocks and any sort of um, obstacles that we don't need to go over. So we're heading out and I have the fins with my left hand. I don't have my fins on yet. I'm walking out as deep as I can go. And then once I see a, a calm in the break, I'll hop in. I'm using my arms and my feet to kind of walk on the rocks and push out as far as I can go. So I have a safe area to put on my fins. Here I am putting on my fins. I know it's hard to see, but my left fin goes on first. I put one fin on, I kick past the breakers, and then I put the other fin on. So I just wanted to share that when you're going out from a short dive at night. So I was exploring some holes in the shallows and I kept seeing throughout the entire spot um, it was a handful of lobster, but they were definitely way too small, so I kept looking around. There's a cool little horn shark here. What's interesting about this spot, it's usually covered in kelp, um, super, super thick, but I think the storms totally wiped it out, so it's very eerie to see, actually. It's just really flat, no kelp, um, and very little sea life from what I usually see at this spot. So one storm can really change the terrain, um, especially when you're shore diving, you notice pretty quick.
My dive buddy K is recording me here. I'm testing out these new lights that I was sent, this and a beacon. Um, I wanted to get some footage and it just so happens on this particular dive, the one time I asked him to record, I spot a lobster. I grab it here, the angle's a little off. I'll show you my point of view in a bit, but it's really interesting because I didn't see any keepers or potential keepers um, this whole night, this whole session. And the one time I asked to be recorded, finally got one. So here's my point of view of grabbing that lobster, but I do want to mention this light on the wrist. Um, I was sent that. I do like that the center beam is super bright, but anyway, I will do a full review later on, but you can see here, I'm looking around, not expecting to see much to be honest. And on the right side, you see that. And the reason why it's dark, see that it lights up, grab it, I secure it and I move it to the surface and the reason why that my light is not on the lobster is not to spook it so it's not great for video but that's how you got to do it Keeper? Where's oh, Keeper? What the? <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. Where's Keeper? Yeah. Oh, that's the white stuff though. That's egg cake, right? Oh, it is? That's where the Keeper is. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'll be doing a review, more thorough review on the light that I'm using. It's called the Orca Torch on the left, and then my Princeton Tech, that my tried and true, is on the right. Um, you can see a comparison here, the brightness, but the overall the beam shape is pretty similar, which I like. Again, thorough review later. What I really like is this beacon. Again, I will do a thorough so, review later on. This is from also Orca Torch. The colors, twist, and it goes, uh, that strobe of leaks. And then the next color blinks and then so forth. The little light, it's nice. Blinks. Red. Uh, I like to keep it green. So with that one lobster, it is time to head in. The session was over, it was freezing, and uh, we didn't see very much, so we were pretty ready to go head in by this time. So um, this is a clip of me heading back out of the water from the shore dive, and I think if this is not shown nor talked about very much, it is pretty important for those that are trying to spearfish for the first time or trying to night dive for the first time. So I wanna walk you through my process when I'm heading back in, especially in rocky conditions, and when the surf is, this time was about a foot and a half or so, but they were pretty, coming in pretty hard, um, though they weren't huge waves. So what I'm doing here is I have my fins off and I take them off before, um, or by the time my feet can touch the ground or pretty firmly and you can kind of walk forward. Um, and the goal of this is not first to not scratch your fins, but also when you need to get up and walk like I'm doing now, you want to be able to do so quickly. So what I do is take your time, time the swells, and really use those swells to your advantage. And when you have that opportunity to walk forward, do so. Try not to fight it. I think that's a big issue um, and a big problem that I learned um, early on not to do. Obviously, if you're in a really bad spot, 
you got to get out of there but for the most part you want to just go with the flow and try to use the water to your advantage and when the water kind of um, takes the load off for a second try to get out out of there as best as possible or fast as possible so here i am out a little banged up but okay just wrapped up the dive it was a pretty rough going out or going out was not too bad coming in the surf really picked up got a little banged up so you always got to be careful or as best you can but uh got one keeper today let's give it a good measure just in case but uh measured it in the water See here, there, two guys, step back. Boom. A one keeper. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, it's cold, we're shivering, we're gonna go, but uh, we got one keeper, ready to go. We are at In and Out. It was a pretty good dive. Visibility was about uh, 12 feet or so. Uh, and swells were about maybe foot, foot and a half. Coming back in, it got a little rough, a little sketchy for my taste because um, it got a little murky and the, surf, the, the swells were a little more aggressive, but we're gonna grab some grub. Then uh, wrap up this night. Dive Buddy K. He's pretty tired, but thanks for watching. Let's see you back home. We are back. It's the next day. Um, as you can see how we store our lobster, we put a little um, wet towel on top to keep the, the humidity in there, keep, put it in the fridge, and then you can see she's still alive and well right there. Um, so this is a spiny lobster. Again, if you don't know the regulations, three quarter inch from between the eyes to the end of the carapace, or it has to be bigger than that. Um, but today I wanted to call out something that I didn't know I found out recently. Thank you um, To all of you that responded to my Instagram story. So this is a female lobster and how you know that is um, The bottom tail here. Oh, she's still kicking um, The bottom tail here those smaller fins these, these smaller fins between the tail, if they're larger in size and if they overlap like this, it's a female and then the males are smaller. This is so they can, the females can hold the eggs. And what I wanted to call out is this white portion here. So this white portion, it, I first was confused on exactly what this was in the water, but um, this is called a tar spot, um, AKA, sperm from a male lobster so what they do is essentially they go belly to belly they layer this tar spot on there and then what happens is this at first will be like a, a gum like texture in the beginning now it's a little harder it'll get harder and darker over time and the the idea here is that the sperm will fertilize the eggs and the eggs will be carried in the tail of the female lobster so legally in california you can take this lobster and eat it and enjoy um, there are some states where it is um, protected these types of lobsters obviously out of season it's protected but uh, during lobster season recreational lobster grabbing california no problem um, it is for me personally if i see another lobster like this in the future i'm gonna let them go um, and hopes of uh, just kind of keeping the next generation going. But just wanted to call that out. This is called a tar spot. Uh, you'll find this to be more prominent later in the season. Right now it's uh, mid-February and it is mid-February here in California and um, females are gonna probably have that spot more often. There's gonna be more mating. And from what I was told at my local spearfishing shop is the lobster season is strategically uh, planned out so that at the end of the season that's generally when females start to um, have their eggs and whatnot so that's why they're protected so um, if you see a female lobster again the white spot in the center or the the longer fins in the tail and you see this white spot that means she potentially could be holding eggs 
in the future. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm gonna cook her up. It's still, yeah, I think it's a little too late now, but I'm gonna enjoy, but for future reference, um, totally up to you if you want to keep the lobster or not, but um, just want to share that. Tar spot.